I'm sorry. Sorry for, uh, for that. Anyways, but the point, the point being is that he basically um, um, got the uh, got the message from Jesus, and there are no eyewitnesses that we know of, except Paul for himself. So I need concrete statements from eyewitnesses. Luke was not an eyewitness, so you can't use Luke. I'm, I'm very specific in my claim. I'm talking about eyewitnesses, not just anyone. You know, because you, you will claim that Paul saw Jesus. Any any uh, pre, uh, priest that will go into a church, you know, in the, in the uh, you know Catholic church, whatever church, they will tell you, yeah, Paul did see Jesus. Thank you. Um, but those are not eyewitnesses, so their claim doesn't mean anything for me, right? Um, in terms of him talking about how hadiths were written centuries after, that's just factually incorrect. In, I'm going to mention to you Sunni and Shia sources where hadiths were written during the time of the prophets. Amr, um, Abdullah, the son of Amr ibn As, wrote a uh, hadith during the time of the prophets. So there you go, you're factually incorrect. Um, Sulaim ibn Qais al-Hilali, the follower of Ali ibn Abi Talib, in the, in the first Islamic century, during the time of the Prophet, wrote down hadith. And, and we have the sources today. So you're factually incorrect, you don't know what you're talking about theologically. Um, and the Gospels were not written during the time of Jesus. John was written 90 years later, and he's the only one who claims to be an eyewitness. He's the only one who does that. Mark, Matthew, whichever one you want to say that was, you know, was during the time of Jesus. Does Mark claim to be an eyewitness? Does Matthew claim to be an eyewitness? Prove it, please. Bring out a statement where, where Mark says, I will write here, and I saw this, you know, word for word happening. Come on, show it to me. Are we done? Yeah. Can I reply? You can reply. Okay. So I'm going to show him again that he's a complete, working to a completely double standard. Point to me the Muslim witness about Jesus Christ's life. Go on. Here you are demanding, show me where Mark says he's an eyewitness. Show me one Muslim who says he was an eyewitness to the life of Jesus Christ. None, not one. What you've got is a book written in a foreign language, written a thousand years, sorry, not a thousand, a thousand miles away, written hundreds of years too late, that claims to testify to things that nobody witnessed. And nobody claims to have witnessed. Now, by comparison, all of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all of them say Christ was crucified. The Quran says Christ was not crucified. Let's just give him his point. Let's say that all of the Gospels are anonymous and we do not know who wrote them. What does that have to do with whether they're correct or not about Jesus Christ crucified? He's a philosopher, he claims. So he's familiar with thought experiment. In a thought experiment in which someone who knows you hands to me an anonymous document that reveals your name and your address, does the fact that it is anonymous mean that the facts are not the facts? Of course not. And he knows that that's correct. So anonymity of the Gospels is actually completely irrelevant to whether they are correct about Jesus Christ being crucified. And what do we do when we have two testimonies that are making an argument about one fact. What do we do? We ask, who was closer to the time? Who was closer to the place? That's the Gospels. That's the writings of Paul. That's the early church. The early church fathers were writing in the first century talking about the crucifixion. But then what do we do? We look for other people's evidence. If you go to Tacitus, Josephus and other Roman and Jewish historians, they talk about Christ's crucifixion. That means all of the evidence says Christ was crucified and the Quran is wrong, which means it's factually false, which means it's not true, which means it isn't from God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reality is that at no point is he willing to engage in his own double standards. He demands types of evidence from me that he can't provide himself. He said, show me where Mark is an eyewitness. Well, I challenge him, show me where anyone claims in these words, I was an eyewitness to Christ not being crucified. I don't want them saying Christ was crucified, no, wasn't crucified. I want them to say I was an eyewitness that he wasn't crucified. He's working to a double standard and he knows it. Okay, uh, I really like your way of like, you know... Uh, Everybody loves me. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 very, 
he's very like passionate and in, um, in his in his like way of debate. So it's very very cool. But, but the thing is, by the way, I'm not a philosopher. Like I, in school, I was like pretty good at it. And uh, like right now, I'm not I'm not studying philosophy. I, I study medicine at university, so it's a, a different subject. But the point being is that um, that I haven't like an interest of, in, in philosophy. It's it's my personal hobby. Um, so that's one thing. The uh, another thing is that the the Quran, per the Muslim claim or the Islamic claim, is the words the, are the literal words of God, and the Bible uh, or the four Gospels, they are. The, uh, the accounts of men who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. This, this is as far as I understand Christian theology. So, so the Holy Spirit within Christian theology is obviously God. Right? It is part of the triune um, God. So, like, to what extent will, will the Holy Spirit ensure that they thank you that the um, that the that the writers of the um, of of the four Gospels won't make any mistakes, right? How can we verify that those individuals were even inspired by the by, by God? Like, objectively speaking, the chain of the Quran, right? Because when 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 God Almighty in the Quran says, "Wama qasaluhu, wama salabuhu, walakin shubiyah lahum," which means that they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but, the, but this was made apparent to them. This, this is the, the direct word of God. Because half the, the son of Sulaiman, God read the Quran from Asim, from uh, the son of Abi Najud, who read from. Abi Abdul Rahman al Sulami, who read from Ali ibn Abi Talib, who, who read from the Prophet, and the Prophet from the from Angel Gabriel, and from God. So I know you don't accept those chains and you say that the Muslims made them up. That's, that's, that's a fair claim to make. But our, but our uh, Quran, we claim it to be the direct word of God. And God has been present throughout all times. But God is omnipresent, right? But the, uh, the writers of the Gospels do not claim to be omnipresent. But the, also the Quran claims to be omnipresent. So the, the comparison is not correct in my view. Can I reply? You may reply. So please note guys, when I asked him to do what he asked me to do, he didn't do it. No Muslim witness to the life of Jesus Christ. And what did he say? Wow, the Quran is the word of Allah. Well, the gospel is inspired by the Holy Spirit. So there you go. If he can appeal to the divine origins of the Quran, we can appeal to the divine inspiration of the Bible. So our argument is secure. It does not matter at all whether we can prove that Luke wrote Luke. We believe that. Absolutely we do. The church has said, believe this gospel and this gospel and this gospel and this gospel. And that's it. The debate is finished. Those are the gospels that we believe. We don't care if there are other Gospels. We don't care if you don't like the names on the Gospels. We believe those Gospels because they were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now notice he said the Hafs Quran. But what about the Wash Quran? And the Duri Quran? And all the other Qurans that we found? He'll have a list for all of them, I am sure. But why do you need a list unless the integrity is in doubt. Why don't you have a list of the Gospels? Because right from the very beginning, we knew who wrote them and where their origins were. That's why you don't have a list of who wrote Luke, because the list is literally one, Luke. And we don't have a list for Matthew, because the list is one, Matthew. And we don't have a list for John because the list is one. John! And we don't have a list for Mark because the list is one. Mark! That's why we don't have lists. And we don't need lists. But they need lists because the Qurans that they use are dated to after Muhammad's death. Muhammad never saw the Hafs Quran. Never, never. If you went to Muhammad and say, hey Muhammad, yeah. here's a Hafs Quran, he'll say, that doesn't look like anything that Zaid wrote. Why? Because the diatrical marks were inserted after Muhammad's death. Furthermore, at the time of Muhammad, there wasn't even a single Quran. <laughs> it was scraps on bones and sheets and leaves, and one of them was eaten by a sheep. 